Bien, buenos días, buenas tardes. Good morning, good afternoon, everybody here. We are starting the six hearings in the 188th period of session. This hearing was uh, called upon by the Commission following the precautionary measures 69318, 619, and 366.21. All those precautionary measures are about Nicaragua and have been established by the Commission in favor of different journalists and workers of independent independent media outlets, especially Radio Daría, La Costa Confidencial. I would like to welcome both the civil society organizations, Rosa Nepolti, which represent the beneficiary in this hearing, and I would like to welcome all the journalists and workers of the media outlets, Nicaraguan media outlets here in this hearing. I am Otonia Urrajola, president of the commission and reporter for Nicaragua. I am joined by the first vice president of the commission, Commissioner Julissa Mantilla, Commissioner Joel Hernandez, who is also reporter for Defenders of Human Rights, Commissioner Esmeralda Rosemena Treitinho, and the reporter for Freedom of Expression, Pedro Vaca, and Fernanda Dos Santos, who is in charge of the precautionary measures team and the ones that work in precautionary measures. I would like to greet Fernanda and Carlos Elgeri and Elguera who, and Kelly Mahara, who have worked with precautionary measures. We are also with the team from the executive secretary who follow the topics about Nicaraguan, who make this possible to have this uh, online meetings with the journalists and thank you for the interpreters who are here today as well. As the state is not present, unfortunately, once again, this hearing, well, we regret that because it would be really important to hear the stance of the state, the objective of these hearings when we try to follow up cases uh, of uh, the precautionary measures or the cases, the voice of the petitioners is essential, but it's also essential to hear the state and the objective of the commission is to create a forum for dialogue I um, uh, I regret the absence of the state here. As the Nicaraguan state is not present, I would like to give the floor to the organizations of the civil society and the journalists from Nicaragua who are present in this hearing and who are the beneficiaries of the precautionary measures to which I uh, referred at the beginning. They will have 30 minutes to pose uh, the different topics related to the precautionary measures. After that, the commissions will, will pose some questions and observations, and then I will give the floor back to them, depending on the time we have for this hearing. So without further ado, I will give the floor I request that while you are not using the floor, you uh, disconnect your microphone so that we that it doesn't interfere with the sound. And we will have a clock that shows the time. I don't know if you can see it. It's on the screen. It starts running once you start using the floor. So without further ado, I will give the floor to you. I will remind you that this hearing is being streamed online by Facebook and the other platform and networks used by uh, the uh, Inter-American Commission. So I will give the floor welcomes once again to you all. Thank you, Madam President. Good morning, commissioners, reporters, special reporters, members of the Executive Secretariat. I am Carlos Herrera. I am here with Carlos Fernando Chamorro, Wilfredo Miranda, Aníbal Toruño, and the representatives of the Race, Equality, and Human Rights Institute, Carmen de Herrera, Mariana Doming Adriana Domingo, eh, and I would like to thank the Commission for the role they have played in the defense of human rights in Nicaragua and for calling this hearing for the implementation of or the execution of four precautionary measures granted in favor of four members of uh, independent media outlet from Radio Darío La Costenísima. 
we would like to express that these uh they being here is really risky because these they consider the crime a uh, crime the uh, uh, execution of our of our journey as journalists so we would request the commission to remind the state of the obligation in the article 63 of its uh rules of procedure of nor of not uh, uh threatening us for participating in this hearing. we It's unfortunate the lack of presence of the state in this hearing, who is not complying with its rights to defend the rights of uh, Nicaraguan people. Honorable Commission, the crisis led by this country was aggravated by the social term turmoil. And in the following years, these, the attacks against the journalists increased and they tried to silence the critical voices and to impose governmental guarantees. More than three years have elapsed since the granting of this measure, two years of the ones uh, uh, granted for the Costenissima and six months of uh, Kalua Salazar and her family and the state has not adopted any measure whatsoever so to protect our life and uh, personal integrity. There are no, um, the, the hindrances were not uh, withdrawn and the uh, facts that happened before the precautionary measures still occur and their perpetrators are impugned. As, this has been evidenced by this commission. The escalation uh, in, in May this year of uh, the repression has uh, led to an aggravation of the situation and there are no spaces for dissent or critic of uh, the power. In order to keep on exercising our journalistic uh, tasks, we had to uh, be in exile, such was happened with, with Wilfredo Miranda and Ival Toruño. And despite that, we keep on ex being exposed to libel by the government. Some other colleagues have been um, withdrawn their uh, passports when they tried to leave the country. It's really painful for us seeing that Nicaragua has become a very hostile territory, or it's even a prison for those who exert their uh, uh, role within the country. We exert a very risky task. And there is harassment by the police and raids, and we have the possibility to be detained and criminalized. Honorable Commission, in this hearing, you will hear the examples of the consequences we are facing in Nicaragua because of the independent journalism. And um, we would like to enforce the precautionary measures granted and to uh, we would like to have the reparation for the violations suffered. We have uh, we are we hope that uh, in for the exercise of human rights and freedom of expressions can be warranted. I would like to give the floor to Carlos Fernando Chamorro, the Director of Confidential. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Commission. As you already know, seven or over th seven months ago, the persecution against independent journalism has escalated as part of uh, the elections uh, to right uh, to free elections. Three media outlets have been raided by the police, Confidencial Diario Noticias and Diario La Plensa. Three journalists are in prison and are accused by the prosecution office for the execution of their tasks and three uh, journalists are detained and other people are in prison for giving interviews to some media outlets abroad using the 
the state is using the cybercrime law and the law issued in 1975. Carlos Mora was detained for the second time in 2021 when he announced his candidacy to run for election. He, the comment, the, the journalist Miguel Angel Mendoza is also in prison for exerting, he, for expressing his opinions in the media and Jaime Arellano. Other detained people are my sister, uh, Cristiana Chamorro, pre-candidate to run for office that promoted freedom of expression and now is accused for money laundering and the ex of the former vice president of the foundation, Martin Chamorro, former official of the foundation, Marcos Flete, Pedro Vázquez, and the manager of the La Presa newspaper, Juan Lorenzo Goldman. The situation we are facing, the journalists of Confidencial, who are beneficiaries of these precautionary measures, have be, has been aggravated from the last time we participated in a public hearing on 2015. September 25th, our measures have been broadened in two situations due to the risky situations our colleagues were in due to complying with their job. In 2019, a group of, of journalists from Confidential and other media outlets came back to the country without having any warranty or protection. Since September 2020, the police uh, detain people 24 hours a day uh, or started uh, surveilling my house and they surveilled my uh, possibility to move uh, in a free way. We recovered the right to inform through the internet and the social media, but in February 2021, the confidential facilities and 100% noticias were raided when the government uh, gave the ownership of those facilities to other people violating the constitution. The police also seized for the second time the uh, media outlet of the facilities of Confidencial and they uh, confiscated our equipment and they detained the beneficiary Leonel Gutierrez. After seven hours of interrogations, Leonel was released. We uh, it's unfortunate to say that uh, Lionel died in 2021 for natural causes, but the state never adopted the measures in his favor and he has not found justice for the violations committed against him during uh, the uh, during the time the measures were enforced. The state accused me for um, virtual acts of corruptions related to the foundation Violeta Barres de Chamorro in order to avoid a detention. I left by, uh, from, uh, by the frontier with Irene Rizondo and I uh, asked for um, uh, asylum in Costa Rica and my house was uh, raided and in August 24th, the prosecution ordered to detain me and accused me of several crimes together with five former officials of the foundation, Violeta Barrios de Chamorro. The prosecution is uh, saying that I'm the vice president of a foundation to which I resigned in January 2013 and there was no confidential funding. The public office uh, and the public prosecution office requested 45 journalists to testify, some of which are beneficiaries of these precautionary measures. In most cases, they were sub uh, subjected to hostile uh, interrogations and they were threatened to have uh, proceedings open against them in, for exerting their professional work. Facing this uh, situation, we also have the libel campaigns and speech hates and 15 out of the 23 people beneficiaries of these precautionary measures have are in exile in order to preserve their lives and personal integrity and to keep on informing in freedom. Meanwhile, the journalists who are in Nicaragua are in 
a very risky situation and they're being persecuted. I will give the floor to beneficiary Wilfredo Miranda commissioners. We are five of the beneficiaries who work in Divergente in Nicaragua or in exile because we have been forced to go in exile in order to take care of our lives because we have to been subjected to the same risks since 2018. Our office was in, in the same install, uh, facilities as Confidencial and we had to evacuate in order to, uh, to avoid the confiscation of our equipment. Since then, we've worked in a decentralized manner with uh, uh, online meetings in order to protect ourselves. While I was covering the seizure, I was intimidated and persecuted by the police who wanted to inform what was happening in Confidencial. I was detained for uh, doing my job. One week after that, I had to uh, go in exile and the prosecution invited me to testify as a witness for the uh, alleged uh, money laundering crime and the prosecutor Ramirez threatened to change my quality or my capacity as, uh, as uh, te testimony and he she read my article and she said she was a, a liar after that I left the country some other beneficiaries were subject to the same interrogation and the beneficiaries who are still in Nicaragua are constant victims of prosecution and police harassment within their houses and in their family houses as well in many occasions the police uh, detains journalists, they request their documents and they photograph them while they ask them about their job. In the media outlet we work in, we were subjected to different libel and disinformation campaigns who contribute to generate a situation of uh, aggressions against us. In, uh, I have to leave uh, to move houses four times after uh, the last one was in June after receiving our uh, a notice, a threatening notice, because our address was uh, disseminated through officialist media outlets. And the systematic persecution patterns to which we are subjected, those uh, journalists in Nicaragua have to take uh, security measures in order to protect themselves. For, ex for example, they, uh, they stopped doing personal activities or public visibility in order to avoid any exposition uh, in front of uh, the uh, supporters of the regimes. I will give the floor to Aníbal Toruño. Sorry, Aníbal, you're on mute. Sorry, you're on mute again, sorry. Honorable Commission, the situation we are facing as beneficiaries of the precautionary measures granted uh, for the members of Radio Daria is similar to the situation narrated by my colleagues. Some of us uh, decided to go into exile and others decided to stop to work in the radio station because of fear of retaliation. The state has not adopted any measures to protect us. Independent journalists have become the target of the escalated repression actions that we are facing since May last year. Up to date, uh, the facts that led to the granting of these measures have not been corrected. Under a regime like this one, in which there is no justice, uh, it is danger, dangerous to be right. And that's why I decided to force myself into exile after three violent raids uh, in, on January the 3rd, the 4th, and the 5th of uh, this year. That's why this, I decided to leave Nicaragua. 
in May 2021, I was uh, called to a hearing conducted by the office, public the office of the public prosecutor, and uh, this was a violation against uh, myself and the media outlet. In September, a close family member was detained by the police without any reason, and their car was um, confiscated for several months without reason. We are suffering police persecution. Our assets are being confiscated in order to prevent our work. And we see that many of the actions are done just because we are journalists and workers of Radio Darío. And in spite of the censorship and the persecution, the radio station team continues to provide information. We have adopted measures, for example, virtual uh, stations and for the news programs in order to uh, reduce the risk of being incarcerated. Um, the, some of the journalists or their close family members have been confiscated uh, of their passports or IDs, and they are not, and those documents have not been returned. During all this time, the government tried to censor our media outlet. They have tried to interrupt our programming uh, by using national radio stations. Also, the government is threatening us with a uh, stopping granting us the media licenses in order to be able to broadcast. Our last broadcastings included also telephone harassment. And this was related to the actions to promote their election campaign. Um, also, we are suffering great economic losses. A day after the election stage, uh, the headquarters of the radio station were attacked by several people riding their motorbikes and they were trying to intimidate the radio station workers madam president commissioners in nicaragua there is no democracy and no rule of law the fact i've been here talking to you means that we could suffer retaliation I decided to overcome that fear because the dictator, dictatorships like ours use fear to prevent us from fighting. Uh, we are here to promote freedom of expression and freedom of express. We need to find new ways of protecting independent media outlets, journalists and citizens of my country. Um, when they denounce violations in these forums, uh, we uh, are doing our best for the murderers in the protests of 2018 uh, to be identified and not for those crimes to be in, in impunity. Historical memory is important. Um, I would like to give the floor now to my colleague, Maria Lisa Gomez. She will be speaking about the situation of uh, the situation of some of my colleague journalists. La Costenísima is an independent community media outlet, the only one with those characteristics in Nicaragua. We have six radio stations, uh, while the Nicaraguan state has six radio stations to promote or to use do, do their publicity. Our journalists have been persecuted and harassed and threatened because of their work. Unfortunately, Sergio Leon, former director of the radio station, died last year uh, of COVID-19, and he could not see the results of the precautionary measures granted on his favor. Uh, some days before his death, he was criminalized for providing information regarding the pandemic situation. After his death, his daughter, a beneficiary of the precautionary measures, uh, took over the direction of the radio station. She is being harassed and threatened 
and persecuted all the time. Uh, the other son of Mr. Leon is in exile and he cannot return to his country. Also, the high level of vulnerability of the beneficiaries of the precautionary measures uh, is clear due to the constant harassment actions conducted against them. These acts are executed by security forces of the state as well as by parasitical or parastate agents. In recent months, uh, police officers have been surveilling the registration uh, three or four times a week with an intimidating attitude. Also, on November the 11th, uh, family members and the journalists were intimidated by police officers when they were paying tribute to, Ser to Sergio. Apart from the intimidations, the workers of La Costenissima are exposed to continuous threats and have suffered physical abuse while the, they exercise their work. Their programs are, are being silenced by the regime. There are several um, uh, power cuts during their broadcasting. Also, for example, we have an investigation into the foundation of Violeta Ramos de Chamorro. And this is a way of intimidating and uh, their members could be submitted to the inhuman conditions uh, suffered by most of those people detained in Nicaragua in recent years. We have also different um, campaigns affecting the reputation of the radio station. And those campaigns are conducted by official media outlets and are also supported by the uh, supporters of the regime and by public officials. For example, the son of one of the mayors uh, also requested that the radio outlet uh, frequency band be removed. Also in June this year, the beneficiary Carlos Edimondo Rey decided to stop collaborating with the radio and decided to go into exile in order to protect uh, his personal integrity. However, his family members are uh, exposed to constant harassment by the police officers. Also regarding the situation of Ms. Salazar and her family is very serious currently and is accentuated and worsened by gender stereotypes and prejudice regarding the roles that should be played by women in society. She has been physically abused by police uh, with her mother and her daughters being present there. Also, she suffers attacks in social media and she has been criminalized because of her work the attacks uh, to her house are regular. They are aimed at intimidating her and preventing her from leaving her house. The most recent attack was on a, uh, December the 8th. Police officers kept surveilling her house with an intimidating attitude. Also, the murder of an independent journalist of Bluefields, Angelagona, uh, is in full impunity. And this allows for the repetition of the serious facts that we have narrated. I would like to give the floor to one of my colleagues, Esteban Madrigal, honorable commissioners. As you could learn from the voices of the beneficiaries, the situation of independent journalists is very serious. And we would like for you to use your own mechanisms to guarantee the protections of those who are suffering these great violations of their human rights, such as the beneficiaries. So we would like to request the commission to issue a follow-up uh, resolution. And be, above all, we think that it's important to use the mechanism of petitions to assess the violations to the American Convention committed by the state. Uh, commissioners, we also would like to remind you that on December the 13th, 2020, we presented a document before the commission to denounce several of the facts uh, because there are several violations of the human rights of the beneficiaries. It's important to say that 31 of those uh, um, measures are still victims 
we would like for that petition to be processed since it complies with the requirements for the application of the peristaltum. Also, we would like to request the application of precautionary measures, and we believe that a quick resolution of the case could help improve the justice situation and could uh, help build an agenda of non-repetition measures that is urgent in our country. Finally, we would like to request this uh, for you to ask the state of Nicaragua to stop taking retaliation actions against independent journalists in Nicaragua by revoking the detention warrants or the arrest warrants issued against them. Also, we would like uh, for the state to take the necessary measures to protect the right to life and to freedom of expression so that independent journalists can exercise their work without any threats or harassment. Also, in order to create the necessary environment for freedom of expression, we want the commission to call up on the state to free all those people who have been detained because of political reasons or for expressing themselves or their ideology. Also, we would like for the state to take the necessary measures uh, for the journalists that had to go into exile to be able to return with the guarantees to protect their lives and their physical and mental security and dignity. Fourth, we would like for the state to repeal the legislation that restricts freedom of expression and freedom of, of press, and especially the law on cyber crime and also the law on self-determination and also the law on foreign agents. Also, we would like for them to amend the law on money laundering so that it complies with international and inter-American standards on human rights. Honorable commissioners, Nicaragua is experiencing a de facto situation and that has affected civil uh, freedoms and political freedoms. Today, more than ever, we need for the commission through its protection mechanisms, intensify their monitoring efforts, taking into consideration the situation of the beneficiaries of the precautionary measures and the people of Nicaragua as a whole. We need to have effective mechanisms to support uh, and to protect uh, people against the violence exacted against them. Human rights mechanisms are not part of an ideology struggle. We need to fight a system that repress people just because they think differently. And the impunity and those actions should be condemned. We request and we thank the commission for any efforts with that aim. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, all of you, for your testimonials, for all the information that you have provided the commission with. Before giving the floor to my colleagues, first, I would like to express that I, we really admire you for your work. And I also, we will also recognize the work of those journalists who are not here today. Some of them are not here because of security reasons. But there is no doubt that the work that you do as independent journalists to make the human rights situations visible in Nicaragua, and because you are part of the truth process, since you are recording and documenting the different violations of human rights happening in your country. I think that's a key role and it's a role played by human rights defenders. So on behalf of the commission, I would like to express uh, our admiration for the work that you're conducting, uh, especially for those who are living in the country and also for those who have to go into exile to preserve their physical integrity. The commission is uh, taking into consideration your requests, for example, uh, studying the personal mechanism in the system of petition of, and cases in this matter. Obviously, we will also call up in the release of all those persons deprived of their liberty, not only for uh, regarding those detained in recent months, but also those persons that have been deprived of their liberty since the beginning of the crisis. 
As you know, the commission through its different reports uh, made recommendations so that the state could provide guarantees for journalists, but also for all the people living in Nicaragua and also for those who have had to leave the country so that they could return. So we understand also the need to repel those laws that imply that there is the de facto rule of law, including the cybercrime law. We will call upon the state of Nicaragua not to exercise retaliation against independent journalists and their families as well. Apart from making some questions, I would like to make the most of this hearing to call upon the member states of the OAS. I hope that their delegations are watching this hearing regarding the delegation of Nicaragua, not only regarding the democratic charter. The OAS charter in its article 65 establishes what a collective guarantee is regarding the compliance and observance of the rulings of the Inter-American Court and the Commission. The court and the commission present reports before the member states of the OAS at the General Assembly in order to establish the compliance with the rulings and the recommendations made by the court and by the commission to the different states. And we identify those states who have not observed those recommendations and rulings. Uh, the commission also presents information regarding those precautionary measures granted and the state of Nicaragua is not complying with the rulings and the recommendations. And we have this collective warranty established in the Article 65 of the American Convention of Human Rights. And therefore, member states have a duty to force the state of Nicaragua to comply with those recommendations and rulings. So I would like to call upon the member states of the OAS, not only with regard to the Democratic Char Charter, but also to enforce the collective warranty in Article 65 of the American Convention. Now I would like to give the floor to my colleagues. I don't know if you have any questions or comments to make. I would like to give the floor first to the first Vice President of the Commission, Ms. Julissa Mantilla. I would also like to greet in solidarity to each of the people here in the hearing, but especially the Nicaraguan people. I hope you have uh, you can carry out with ca carry on with the struggle, and especially to those people who have had to leave their country. I also regret the absence of the representatives of the state. I believe that the symbol of respect uh, to democracy is to be able to establish dialogues and to be present in the compliance of the international obligations and duties the state assume which is dignity and human rights defense. Uh, that's my first message. I would also like to underscore how the commission has carried out its uh, hearings, but especially due to the importance and the need that all the tools available to the commission are in to defend human rights. And these hearings are uh, really making basically the situation at a regional level. You have expressed, you have provided us with a lot of information, and I would also like to reiterate that if there is information you could not say because of uh, things, because of uh, situations related to safety, you cannot tell us, you can give it to us. But in Nicaragua, you have people, you have family, you have contact networks on which there can be retaliation. So if there is any information that you cannot provide through these means, but you want to provide to the commission, they will be welcome. And uh, the case of the uh, journalist Salazar, this gender approach in particular on women journalists includes not only a general replay, re reprisal, but also uh, gender aspects, we would also to like to receive that information as well and to have more detailed information. I would just would like to make this request and to reiterate our commitment as the president of the Commission and Rapporteur for Nicaraguan States. We value the activities of journalism. It's not possible that such a novel activity and so important such as journalist becomes a uh, an everyday risk. That's not possible because 
through your work, the rights of people are protected and the Inter-American Commission is undoubtedly on your side. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Mantilla, Commissioner Hernandez. Thank you, Madam President. I would also like to greet all the people and to express my solidarity towards them. Uh, the Commissioner President has also mentioned this nature of uh, human rights advocate uh, assumed by the uh, journalist here today. Even though this human rights advocate concept is a very broad one, in the case of Nicaragua, you have become the most visible phase of uh, the human rights defense. You have turned your uh, place of work, the only civic space available in Nicaragua in order to make the situation visible and to promote the defense of human rights. Esteban Madrigal has made a very detailed list of which are the petitions for the commission. We agree totally with those uh, petitions. It fixes a roadmap which we should follow as a commission, but it's also really uh, important that you and other members of the community, other international organizations concerned by the situation in Nicaragua, it's very important to gather efforts and to be on this path of recovering democracy in Nicaragua. We are facing a very um, risky situation. All forums have been closed, but there is a very wide um view that states have to uh, exert their uh, duty and to warranty the situation of the human rights in Nicaragua. I just would like to say in order to conclude, I would like to highlight two facts. One of them is really um, Sad, and the other one is unfortunate. The first one has to do with the letter of the OAS. I would like to reiterate uh, the Commission has already done this in a press release. This fact does not affect the um, scope of the Commission on Nicaragua. The Commission will keep on exerting all its, co all its uh, competences on Nicaragua and other instruments uh, Nicaragua has ratified in order to call upon the Nicaraguan state to respect human rights, your human rights, Nicaraguan's human rights. The second one, well, I cannot, uh, I should mention a very sad situation and it's the fact that this is the last public hearing that the President Urejola presides in as her uh, as a president and a, um, rapporteur for Nicaragua. You already know the great work and the great job she has carried out for Nicaraguan for Nicaraguans. Even though we have already expressed our sadness because of the end of her term of office, I would also like to underscore that the path that the commission has taken and the commissioner has taken has set, uh, has set the foundation so that the commission will carry out working this, um, pursuing this work in favor of Nicaragua. That's the legacy of Commissioner Rejola to you, Nicaraguans and to us as well through the special system of monitoring for Nicaragua and a very active uh, work dynamics who, which has given the commission the tools in order to work together with you. Thank, thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Commissioner Hernandez. Thank you for your words. And I would also, before giving the floor to Commissioner Esmeralda, I will like to ensure that the commission will keep on doing its work. I am sure that there is a very strong commitment. I know what is a commitment from the commission and the Messeni team, and we are keep on we're going to keep on working on that. So 
regardless of the fact that I'm leaving, I know that the commission will keep on working with the, for the rights of Nicaragua and I will give the floor to Commissioner Rosemena. Thank you, Madam President. Well, I have to echo Joel's words first that uh, end of your term of office in the commission I would like to express that reaffirms that commitment you have just mentioned from the commission as a whole. It's a commitment to the Nicaraguans as a whole with its people. And I would like to express hurtfully this uh, message for the family of those journalists who have lost their lives during this period without having the answers that the precautionary measures of the commission um, take. So I will add this message of solidarity addressed to you all for your commitment for a great work which is so complex so difficult and with this feeling of frustration but having the opportunity to hear you here it's a way to gather information essential information for our job but also is the opportunity for you to express what you feel and to be able to communicate that and through the um, public visibility of this hearing, the whole Nicaraguan society can receive this, but also for the American continent as a whole, when we assess such a complex, such a difficult situation, such as the one Nicaragua is undergoing today, we need to raise awareness and we need the commitment of the continent as a whole, commitment to democracy, to the rule of law, to the defense of all of the people as a whole. And I would just like to reassert this need to work for the uh, awareness of the continent and to use all the means at our reach so that that collective warranty that is enshrined in the convention can be really, can be used, can be reaffirmed with the support of the countries, the brother and sister countries. I said this to the commissioner. I commit myself to support our internal mechanisms, uh, Messani, and I would also like to express that there is a team of officers here in the commission who are really commitment committed to this cause thank you for giving me this opportunity and i know that there are some considerations that will be important for its uh, vision as a reporter for freedom of expression. Thank you, Commissioner Rosemena. I will give the floor to a reporter for freedom of expression, Pedro Vaga, who has, who has been working hand in hand with us. Thank you, Madam President. I would like to greet the commissioners and the petitioners, Wilfredo, Maria Luisa, Esteban, Carlos Carlos, Carmen. And this is a working meeting, which is quite sad to us um, because of what uh, Commissioner Joel Hernandez mentioned. It has been 
undoubtedly a year seen from this perspective a very difficult year for the press and there was an escalation of the violence against uh, the press in this continent and uh, having the strength of the commissioner Urrejola in this path gives me enough elements to say that amongst this tragedy against the journalism the commission did not uh, made all the efforts at its hand and this is reflected in the Miami visibility of the case Angel Maona which is available for the team in order to follow up these difficult times who are really which are really transcendental for the future of Nicaragua. We observed that there were at least seven, 65 uh, journalists that were in a very serious situation and these precautionary measures that are analyzed today are uh, also um show who those who are not here and the rapporteurship also says that there are no warranties to the right of freedom for expression there are two things ahead of us we need from the press the building again the rule of law in Nicaragua which has to do with the guarantees to freedom of expression and the work of journalists and I hope that uh, the justice for a victim is, is also uh, related to the documentation of human rights and that has to do with the mandate of rapporteurship uh, to so that the fact that you continue uh, working in spite of these circumstances shows the resilience of the journalism with really uh, impressive characteristics. I have just one question, which has to do with the um, with the fact that the risk is in force, there are several circumstances that have led to uh, people to uh, leave the country. But according to the documents that have been presented to us and that have been received by the rapporteurship, what has to do with the uh, Redesca, we also have to show the fact that we are doing journalism uh, from outside. There are people inside Nicaragua who are uh, undergoing certain risks and we would like to ask for that. And what is it that allows them to keep on uh, carrying out their job and also risk in um, digital media if this was uh, addressed or if this was seen during the last few uh, during the last period including online harassment i would also like to express our solidarity with the nicaraguan population thank you pedro i will give the floor back to the the civil society, whether they would like to answer the questions, you can have 30 minutes. Well, if you allow me, I would like to speak about some of the topics and I would also like to answer to some of the comments made by the commissioner. I will start by answering the last comment. There is a risk situation in our family environments. I'm speaking 
for myself, but I I am sure that this is a comment which is shared by all my colleagues who are uh, the subject of these precautionary measures. I would rather address the situation in a private way in order to share that situation with the commission and also the colleagues and journalists source of information who are in Nicaragua in under really risky situations due to the situation of unprotection in the country. I believe that's another topic that should be treated privately with the commission so as to be inform us how the journalists are working nowadays and the new threats that have arised. And I would like to focus on two things. First, until my, May this year, in Nicaragua, there was a persecution against independent journalists, the uh, murder of uh, Helga Ona, the occupation of media outlets, the direct censorship, aggressions against journalists. However, due to the citizens' right to inform, there was the possibility to keep on uh, working as journalists. The access to public sources was uh, blocked since 2007, 2008, when it was when the the law on public information was passed. That was um, not worth from the beginning. And we kept on working as journalists, working with independent sources. Today in Nicaragua, those independent sources are also criminalized. So it's not only the freedom of press and freedom to uh, freedom of information, but it's also criminalized the right to freedom of expression and freedom of opinion due to several actions, de facto actions, and uh, the abuse of laws that are unconstitutional, such as one of the, uh, such as the laws related to cyber crimes and law 10,055. And I will mention three concrete examples. The po the political science, Antonio Antonio Peraza, who was captured by the police after he gave an interview on a Sunday of um, the program Esta Semana under my direction. I was already in exile and he told me Tomorrow I'm going to the uh, to Channel Ten, and he was to the he went to that program, and in the afternoon he was captured by the police. He was detained, and he had a proceeding opened uh, for a contradiction to um, sovereignty. He spoke about the lack of conditions to carry out democratic and free elections in the country and he provided concrete information about the lack of these issues then the case of Edgar Parrales who in the last few weeks he was one of the last people detained he was not the last but one of the last and he had turned in one of the main open sources for communication uh, media outlets so as to speak about the political and uh, judicial crisis and the relation of the OAS with the state and the crisis of the relation with the state, uh, with the uh, Nicaraguan Catholic Church. The former Ambassador Parrales gave an interview on the weekend. He went also to Channel 10 in the morning on Monday and at uh, 
in the afternoon he was uh, captured by civilians and some hours later he was in prison in the chipote accused for conspiration and i would also like to mention the case of the writer sergio ramirez novelist intellectual writer and the prosecution office issued a detention order on him and was accused of crimes only for exerting freedom of expression and for publishing a fiction novel. So in Nicaragua, the freedom of expression, freedom of conscience is being persecuted and the freedom of uh, religion as well, practiced by uh, people from the Catholic Church or other religions. And I will add something more which affects this environment of uh, freedoms, let's say, which is the wave of retaliation against the uh, organizations of the civil society who have been um, rejected or withdrawn from uh, having a legal uh, nature, especially FIDEC, for more than two, for 20 years was uh, research centers on the main social indicators of the country, in particular poverty. The closure of FIDEC entails a prohibition to have independent information in Nicaragua on the state and the life of the Nicaraguans on poverty and social indicators of health education in criminalizing these um, interviews and these research papers. Also, there was a university who was also prohibited and uh, cultural associations such as Medina Godoy and many others. So I believe that this allows us to depict the environment on which the freedom of expression is being criminalized together with the freedom of opinion and freedom of expression. Journalist Miguel Mendoza, as I explained in my presentation, is criminalized for giving his opinion in the social media and these kinds of actions try to create a state of self-censorship in the population and the state of fear. Fortunately, there is resilience in order to keep on alive this effort to inform and not to um, yield to this dictatorship. And finally, I would like to acknowledge and thank the Commissioner Urrajola for her work as Commissioner, as Rapporteur for Nicaragua, and also as President of the Commission for giving, uh, for contributing to us together with the Commission's team so as to make this crisis situation visible. And I, I am really, I'm sure that the commission will keep on following up on this work. And the Latin American states in particular, some of them who have had a very long tradition of defense of human rights, such as Argentina and Mexico, recognize this cries of human rights, which is affecting essential values such as freedom of expression, freedom of information, freedom to choose and to being, cho being chosen. And these essential rights need for a reaction from the different con uh, countries of the Latin American continent. You can just take the floor. Aníbal, you were raising your hand. Thank you. I cannot intervene right now. 
to say, Madam President, Antonia, that apart from how important this moment is for us in order to exchange, to express ourselves and to communicate what's happening, something that seems so easy, but in our country, those actions are criminalized. We would like to say that you have left a very important mark. You supported Nicaraguans during these difficult times. I think this is one of the most important international events in Latin America, one of the most atrocious events in the continent. We see violations of human rights, violations of the right to freedom of expression. This is happening in Nicaragua. I know that this is the end of a time, but it's the beginning of a new project because um, your work and the work of the commissioners should continue. You supported us when we were alone, when nobody was supporting us. When we were in Nicaragua, you raised your voice and you showed our voice to the rest of the world because sometimes Nicaraguans were not able to have or to express their voice. Um, you gave us, gave us protection. And the, I hope that Nicaraguans have a way so to leave this crisis behind so that the world can see a new Nicaragua in the future. And I would like to suggest this honorable commission that it is true. The, commission, the Nicaraguan state will not allow the commission to visit the country, but as an alternative, uh, a mission to Costa Rica, to El Salvador and to Guatemala should be conducted because the situation in Guatemala is also very serious. Uh, we are seeing that this could be repeated. Our situation is a bad example. What happened in Cuba could be repeated. It's time to discuss this with governments and to convince them that defending human rights and freedom of expression is something that is fundamental. My colleague was talking about Argentina. And I'm trying to understand how some can ignore our situation when we are in, a, in such a serious situation and crisis. Um, we need to consider the weakening of democracies in Latin America. It's important to have a bilateral meeting with you to express important things that should be communicated. What living in Nicaragua implies, what exercising freedom of expression and journalism in Nicaragua means. This implies um, presenting testimonies because we are seeing paralyzing fear. We are living in a time of silence because the government of Ortega is manipulating human voices, silencing them. I know that our actions could lead to more violations that will affect our friends, our family members, other Nicaraguans, but we need to promote freedom of expression. We need to overcome fear. I think that this moment and this opportunity is fundamental. And you, missioners, you have been a voice for us in the world. You have embraced Nicaragua in spite of its tragedy of losing their rule of law, their democracy, their freedom of expression. Thank you also, President, for your friendship, for the affection, 
for your resilience, for being what you are, because without you, we should in invent or make you up again. Thank you. Eh, buenas tardes. Eh, muchas gracias. Good afternoon. Thank you for inviting us to this hearing. It's been very important to provide an update to the Commission regarding the serious issues in the exercise of journalism and freedom of expression in Nicaragua. For us, it is an honor to be here supporting the beneficiaries of the precautionary measures granted. We really thank the efforts made for those who participated for presented updated information. And also would like to thank the team members of Les Igualdad organization for presenting all the information in a comprehensive way before the commission. The commission now has detailed information and you will have more information that we have not been able to present today. Also, when we presented information or updates on each of the precautionary measures, um, I would like to answer Pedro Vaca's question. Uh, we are providing in those updates the details and the answers to your question. And we would like for that information to be considered in the petition that we have just submitted. So that with all that information, the Commission has no uh, hesitation in applying the per salto mechanism. And we believe that the sooner this decision is made, the better. I think that processing this petition will give an opportunity to the Commission to study the size and extent of these violations that are being perpetrated against freedom of expression in Nicaragua, but also will help build an agenda of reconstruction. I think we believe uh, we believe it's a very important opportunity for the Commission to think about its role. We have the different international mechanisms of protection of human rights, and sometimes individual cases contribute to change the future of a country. We are setting the grounds to have a different history. This cannot be, this won't be tomorrow probably, but we hope that in the short term, our country has a different history in Latin America. I also would like to second uh, the gratitude expressed by, by my colleague for your actions and your role the Commission has denounced the atrocities happening in our country. I would like to thank also the members of the Executive Secretariat who are in charge of monitoring the situation. And especially we would like to reiterate our gratitude to Commissioner Urrejola for her key role we have already expressed this. We believe that her actions have been very important. We also know that the commission has institutional capacity of assuming commitments of incorporating expertise uh, with the passing of different commissioners that are part of the history. Uh, that contributes to the institutionality of the Commission. And they also teach us as members of civil society, you are always waving that huge fabric that the Commission is. And we would like to especially thank Commissioner Urrejola. We would like to thank the other commissioners. And we are really happy to have the Commission on the side of the victims. 
I only one more thing to say is a question regarding the positioning of the commission and its role of coordination with other international mechanisms such as the UN bodies. We know that they are making their best before the Human Rights Committee or Council so that the reaction and the actions are up to the circumstances in Nicaragua. And we know that they are also working for the enforcement of the Inter-American Charter, Democratic Charter. Um, taking into consideration the non-observance of the provisional measures sub, uh, filed by the court, or issued by the court, and the non-observance of the precautionary measures included or issued by the commission and the inclusion of Nicaragua in chapter 4B, I think that those actions are very important. We need uh, all those. I, we believe that the commission has a key role because of the relationship, the close relationship that the commission has with the victims. The fact that the commission hears the victims directly, that the commission hears the proposals and the testimonies of the victims. I think that the role of the commission is very important to take into consideration the actions and initiatives at the regional and international level. Thank you. I don't know if anybody else would like to take the floor. If not, we are going to bring this meeting to a close. Just one more comment regarding the absence of the state. I recall that in our last hearing, there was a comment of the state of Nicaragua uh, giving an opinion regarding each of the cases. And the state of Nicaragua said, in the state of Nicaragua, there is freedom of expression. And they said, you have the Supreme Court of Justice if you have, and those cases are there. We presented a writ of amparo before the Supreme Court of Justice. Those uh, amparo writs were admitted, but there was no final resolution. And after that, the state, the made a decree to confiscate El Confidencial. And they went against a rule that says that asset confiscation of media outlets is prohibited. Uh, they did not provide any legal reasoning for that. And in Nicaragua, censorship is practiced through de facto mechanisms, and that is prohibited by the National Constitution of Nicaragua. Thank you. I understand that nobody else uh, is requesting the floor. I would like to start by the last comment made by Carlos Fernando Chamorro. The commission issued very recently a report regarding the abuse of power that accounts for the lack of independence of the judiciary that is something that is key in a democratic state and something that is not that does not exist in Guatemala in Nicaragua right now so i would like to thank Carlos Fernando Chamorro for his comments regarding the um, confiscation of assets and with regard uh, with uh, the coordination of our work with other international organizations, we would like to say that we have a very close relationship with the office in Panama of the High Commissioner of Human Rights of the United Nations. We were together in Nicaragua and we are working with Alberto Brunone, that is a representative there. And we assess when it is good to issue joint press releases, we have a very good relationship and that relationship will continue to be closer and closer. We have a joint mechanism, Joel Hernandez uh, may know the name better, but we have a joint mechanism with the Office of the High Commissioner of Human Rights. 
we are working together, not only in the case of Nicaragua, but also taking into consideration uh, the different issues occurring across the region. Um, but I would like to highlight the coordinated work that we are conducting in the case of Nicaragua. Uh, in our hearings, we always invite the representatives of the High Commissioner Office and also as Rapporteur and Joel Hernandez, we have made presentations uh, before the Human Rights Council regarding the situation of human rights in Nicaragua, regarding the enforcement or the application of the Inter-American Democratic Charter. As you know, every time that the political bodies of the OAS, the Permanent Council, the General Assembly, if they invite us to present on the situation of Nicaragua, we go and we give our technical opinion, we submit or present all the reports so that they are an input for member states of the OAS to make decisions. I think that's important. And so that states can evaluate the application of the democratic charter. That will be fundamental and has been fundamental. I also would like to thank on behalf of the Inter-American Commission, all of you for this hearing. I think that the information that we have received is very important, uh, not only for the precautionary measures team, but also for all the team, for my colleagues, and also for their special rapporteur for freedom of expression, to whether we believe that, that um, the precautionary measures team had provided a very good explanation regarding the context, and you have provided a lot of information regarding the context, regarding the freedom of expression, the freedom of faith, and how all those freedoms have been censored. I also would like to repeat how concerned the commission is regarding the compliance of the precautionary measures that have been granted, and we would like to say that we are committed to make everything that is uh, within our power so that those precautionary measures are implemented. And also we will continue monitoring the situation through the system of petitions and cases, through precautionary measures. We will monitor also provisional measures. We will continue making press releases. We will continue presenting before the political bodies of the OAS. And also we will continue working together with the Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights of the UN. Uh, my colleagues, the plenary of the commission, uh, the special rapporteurships, the thematic rapporteurships, and the executive secretariat. And I would like also to highlight the team of precautionary measures that is here under the leadership of Fernanda Dos Santos, because uh, she was part also of Meseni and she was in Nicaragua in 2018. She knows firsthand the situation. And I would like also to highlight the work of the Meseni. Uh, all the things that I've been able to do is because of the support of all these people that I have just listed. We have a team that is committed to human rights, to fundamental freedoms in Nicaragua, and that will continue to happen, uh, regardless of me leaving the commission. I'm sure that my colleagues and the team of the executive secretariat will continue making the situation in Nicaragua visible, will continue denouncing the situation in Nicaragua. I, want to thank you for your affection and for your trust. Uh, we were together in Nicaragua. We, we were able to visit Nicaragua. We have met uh, also outside Nicaragua. We have been able to see each other face to face. I personally want to thank your affection, your trust. I would like to thank you for your resilience. If I raise my voice, is because of the work of independent journalists in Nicaragua, for the work of those who are deprived of their liberty arbitrarily in Nicaragua, for human rights defenders in Nicaragua. For example, Ms. Doña Vilma Núñez, I cannot stop mentioning her because she is a clear example of a human rights defender, taking into consideration the story of our, her life history. I also believe I'm here because of the family members of political prisoners. And I also would like to highlight the role of the April mothers. I will always keep their testimonies in my heart. Uh, in May, when they lost their sons, when they lost their husbands, they were there denouncing when the situation was very hostile. 
I would like to express my admiration for the people of Nicaragua. And I wanted to say that it's been a pleasure to be reporter for Nicaragua. I will continue raising my voice wherever I am. Thank you. Sorry. Thank you. Um, bueno, con esto, um, damos a, a... With this, we are adjourning this hearing. And this is see you soon because we will stay in touch. I would like to excuse myself. And this is a space of trust, but I hope that sooner rather than later, we can meet each other and we can celebrate all together. That is one of my biggest desires. I will continue working for that to happen. A big hug and thank you to all of you. Thank you. Good afternoon. Thank you, Antonia. Big hug. Ciao. Ciao.